Hi, it's Jess here from nigessa.co.uk. Thank you for joining me today. So I am going to bring you um, my thoughts on my scan and cut. A few people have asked, so I thought I'd do one. So I bought the scan and cut to, to scan things and cut things. Um, I am solely using it really at the moment just as a pair of scissors. Um, I have uh, rheumatoid arthritis, so fussy cutting um, is quite difficult for me and I can't do very much of it um, because my, my hands really hurt and sometimes the, the joints will lock. So if I'm using a pair of scissors and my little finger will end up being sort of bent over because you sort of use them like that. Um, and then they lock and then it's really painful to unlock them. So that was my selling point to Ed <laughs> when I went, I want to spend this amount of money on what is basically a pair of scissors. Um, that it was for medicinal reasons. Um, but um, anyway, I managed to get mine on a day when there was 20% off. It was a sheer luck. So I did pay £400 for it. I thought I'd put that one out there because people will ask how much to pay for it. I did pay £400 for it, but it was £500 when I first looked at it. So, I have used it for cutting DSP. So, um, this piece of DSP was covered in butterflies. Um, so, I scanned it and it cut these ones out. Now, I didn't want half ones. Um, this one, I would have... And this one I would have accepted, but it didn't cut it. Now there are didn't cut it, it didn't scan it right. So when you scan it through, and I'll show you on the scanner, that sometimes it doesn't pick them all up. So I just cancelled them, but it picked these up nicely. It even cut out the antennae there, but not these ones. Um, so I cut these without a border. Now let me show you. I've got a little. I'll show you on the machine. But you can choose to cut with a border or cut without. So these butterflies, as you can see, the antennae on these ones have not come out. Not really that bothered, to be fair. Look, that one did do a half one. Um, but yes, I was very pleased with how they came out. So if you don't tell it to cut a border um, I think I've used that one where it did the ten eyes did come out um, on a project already so that that is them cut out and I think they've done it's done the job so much better than I would have okay so I was very happy with that one thing that I will say about it if you notice on this one it goes in there and that's because there would have been these white dots. So it has to look for an outline. So there would have been dots there, which is why it's cut on the inside, um, because that's where it would have seen the line go. Um, but yeah, very happy with that. So that was it, scanned and cut without a border. And I've got all these lovely butterflies for using on projects. So they were cool. Let's move them out of the way. Let me open a drawer next to me to pop them in. So this one, this was a sheet of pumpkins. So these are both um, retired DSP. Um, so I was having a practice with them and I cut these with a little border. So you can tell it to do, I think it's 0 0.4 of a centimetre, which is, is it 0 0.4? Because that's like, Looks like it's more than that. Anyway, oh, found some more butterflies, but there. So there's there's the pumpkins. There's more, but anyway. And I didn't want the half ones, so I didn't want those. But as you can see, it cut them all out. And these ones have a little border. So a little bit like um, some of the dies that we, we have that um, cut round the paper. They leave a white border. So thought they were quite cool. Uh, I was going to use them in Thanksgiving. Broomsticks up to the side. Um, but I didn't. But 
if I'm going to use these in a journal or anything, you can ink around the edge. So they are okay. So there was there was that piece. And then the other sheet, and I think I've shown this sheet before. Um, let me get it. So this sheet here where I cut the owls from. If I show you the sheet without them cut out. I've still got the sheet without them cut out. Yeah, yeah. So that's the sheet without them cut out. Now, when I scanned this in, and I might show you what it looks like, actually, um, it picks up the outline of everything. So it was really, really busy. So it picked up all of these. So it actually was quite time consuming to go in and cancel all the outlines of this. I might show you that so that you can see what I mean. And um, so I did get a few of the foliage because it was just like, I can't be bothered anymore. <laughs> my, it was actually hurting my hands and it was like, I've got this, do not hurt me hands. But as you can see, I got quite a few of the owls out. I, the reason why I haven't got these other owls was because the scan and cut was picking up the lines not well enough for it to um, make nice owls. So... And these are my owls. I have since made a beautiful um, box that I can put these in. So these are my owls. I won't get them all out, but now if you look at compare these two, and then that can give you a little bit of what I mean. Put them on white card. So that is the same owl image and the scan and cut on this one has cut round there so it didn't pick up the outline on that which is why this one has lost a bit of his body. Um, so that is one of the issues that you sometimes get with it. So it's not perfect sometimes, but I can live with that because I've got all these other owls as well that I'm quite happy with. So you can see on that one, again, it's the same image. And on that one, he's cut a little bit out there that he hasn't on that one. So it just depends on the scanning process, what it picks up. It's done an extra little bit there that it hasn't done on that. But do you know what? It's good enough. It's good enough and it saves my hands. So I was quite happy, quite happy about that. So that's cutting out of DSP, which was one of the reasons why I wanted it. Um, we had some bird paper a few years ago and it cut these out, gorgeous. Here's me, I've used it in a recent project. And um, I was very pleased with that. I didn't like the piece of DSP with all the birds on, but I loved it when it did that. Now, one thing I want to point out is... There's uh, a sheet I can't find. think I've put it away. Give me a sec. Okay, so I've got two stamp sets that are new and coming up in the new January catalogue. So this is Bows and Blossoms. This comes with a punch that punches out these leaf shapes, but I don't think they punch out the actual stamped image. Um, I'm just going to pull that up because that's annoying me. But it was overlapping at the bottom and it ripped a bit. Um, have I got the punch handy? I have. Um, no, it's smaller and that leaf is not the same. So they're complementary as opposed to punch it out. Um, so, yeah. Uh, 
And then this is a set that's free in celebration. It's a double celebration, so it's £90 order and you get some DSP with it. And I'm going to see if it will cut out these two images. So let's, let's get them stamped. So I'm going to use Whisper White, Ordinary Whisper White, not the thick Whisper White. My Scan and Cut has an auto blade thing. I, uh, I asked... Um, Ashley, who is Apple Lover, some a number, Apple Lover something, for, I can't remember the number now. Um, she does lots and lots of scan and cut videos and I did watch a gazillion of her um, videos before I bought it. Anyway, I chatted to her about it because we were at a team event together and her advice was to go for the one with the auto blade set in so that it all automatically detects that's not stamped very well um detects i might need to re-ink this it detects your paper cardstock that you're using um so that it um it knows it knows how to um, set the um, the blade for you because it's like the depth of which it cuts. So it changes, I think, some older models. Um, they, um, you have to manually set it. So it takes, it takes a bit of extra time. Let's see if my Merry Merlot will stamp better. Okay, perhaps it's supposed to look like that. And then I'm going to do these flowers. And I can already see where we've got some gaps in this. Might be better under my stamp mat. I find that sometimes with the very solid ones. So we've got gaps. So it would try and cut each of these out individually if we don't put a border on it. So I might do that. Uh, let's get the leaves. Get the leaves down. So I think these leaves will cut out perfectly. Oh, didn't stamp that very well. Um, I'm going to do that one in Old Olive because you've got a really solid outline. So they should go really well. Do. Um, so then for these I'm going to stamp in memento I just want a black image because then I might colour them in afterwards So I need my stamp mat for this because they're photopolymer, so they definitely need stamp mat. There we go. Getting ink all over my hands. I always do when I use a memento. There we 
There we go. So let's have a look at these so we can see what needs an outline. So can you see that there's gaps along all of these? There's a gap there at the end there. I think pretty, there's a little gap there, a little gap there and there. So they'll need um, sorting out, as will the ones around the flowers. So I can do the black outline really easily. If I use that pen I had here two minutes ago, there it is. So I'll use this pen and I'm just going to... So just scrutinise your, st your stamped image and then you can see where there's gaps. So just going around, checking, checking where the scanner may and you can always scan and if it doesn't pick it up then you can start again so we'll just join those two there What it won't do is what's called landlock. So in here, it won't cut in there. So that's that's one thing to sort of think about. Don't have to do too much on this image, I don't think. But I take my pen with me anyway, just to make sure. Now on these ones, I think I'm going to use my Stamping Right markers. So I want Merry Merlot. Oh, they're all going to fall. I've got them balanced on a shelf that's a little bit too short for them. And, uh, and they have all fallen down recently. So, so I've got Cherry Cobbler and I've got Merry Merlot. You could use a pencil. And rub them out afterwards. I might do that as well. So I'm going to take a nib end and I'm just going to just going to join. Join those up. Now if I'm going to do it with a border I think it will be all right because I think it will stop a little bit around there. But we'll see. And the other's Mary Merlo. But on here, these all need closing up. So, close that to there so that it goes all the way around. So that is a continuous line now going all around there. So that should work. What I might do on one of these is get a pencil that can then be rubbed out just 
see what happens there. I don't know why I used that rubber. It's rubbish. Makes a dirty, smudgy mess. There. So, let's go down now and see what the scan and cut um, does with that. I was going to look at see um, the other thing that I use it for. I know a lot of junk journalers use it for this is for cutting out um, digitals so lots and lots of junk journalers buy um, digital images so if I show you so that's a digital image um, that would take me forever to cut out but the scan and cut should cut that out without any problems so we're going to have a go at that i have an issue with this sheet because it's got bugs on and i don't like them um and then sheets like this isn't too bad to cut out um because the straight lines and it's just chop 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 but i would still get my scan and cut to cut it out and then these um sort of floral images and i sometimes get like sheets of butterflies as well and um, the scan and cut makes light work a bit and then I just have them already doesn't take me long at all scan it through it cuts these sort of things out with ease so let's go down and see what happens right so we're down in my dining room um, this is my scan and cut and I don't know if you can see but it's quite a large machine, um, which is why it's still in my dining room and hasn't made it um, up to um, my craft room yet. And in order to use it, you have um, this rather large mat and um, it has a 12 by 12 space on it. And you need 12 by 12 coming out the back as well as 12 by 12 at the front to let it go in. Um, right, so I'm just going to turn it on uh, so I can check if you can see the screen. That's coming on nicely. This tips so you can have it wherever wherever you, you need it. And this comes down. I've got a feeling my, my stand is going to be in the way, so I'm going to have to move it slightly this way. I think you can still see it. So you have a little drawer here where you put, you get your stylus, you get a, a spatula. I have a pen and a pencil there ready if I need to do any drawing. I've got my blade in there. Um, sort of ready to go. So press OK, carriage is going to move to the position. So we are going to take our mat. Now your mat has an arrow there. That's the way it's going in to the machine. You've got a little bit of a protection, protective film over the top. So I'll take that off. And this is tacky. So I'm going to put my card on there and press it down. I'm just going to put it on the table. So I'm going to go out a shot a little bit there just to make sure that it's well adhered because you don't want any movement. Then you load it. There's sort of marks on here, arrow, to tell you where to load it. Push it in there and then you press scan. I'm going to do direct cut. Just going to do it on the machine, my paper. I'm going to say 12 by 12, even though it's not 12 by 12. Um, 
but I say that it is 12 by 12. So the mat hasn't loaded. So I did that wrong so that you can see that there's nothing you can do. This is wrong with it. So you press load map, mat and it takes it in. And it's at this point, I usually give it a little bit of a rub there. So now it's ready. So now we can press start. So it's now scanning in the machine everything that I've done. And I'll be able to see up here how that looks to see if I need to make any adjustments to it. So first thing I've got to do is frame the image. So this is the bottom of the mat, so we don't want any of that. So you can just push it up. Matt, I'm going to go even further up. So that is the bit of the mat that I want to scan. I'm going to click OK. So now it's just now trying to sort of work out in that image what, what they are and the edges of the images so it knows where to cut. So it is taking a little bit of a time. This is what it does. So now I can see the images. So at this point, what I do is I go to, so I can have, that's the magnifying glass. So I can have a real good look. I can make it even bigger so that I can see where it's gonna cut on these lines and it wants to on that one, it wants to still cut. I didn't, I didn't do that line well enough. Let's have a look at the others. And on these, it wants to cut these petals out separately, which is one of the things that can possibly happen it's detecting lines there but I'm hoping if I do it these last two it's actually going around the whole thing because of the way that I drew around but these ones it wants to cut these petals out separately um, because I haven't joined them there it's not recognizing on there the pencil line that I drew um, so that's just that's just one of these things that you've got to sort of learn about the machine. Those leaves are absolutely fine. As is those leaves. It's cutting, going to cut those out. No problem. I didn't think I'd have a problem with those leaves at all. And then when we come to this flower image, there's a gap there. Which I'm surprised about. So it's. So we've got, I don't know if you can see what I'm, what I'm looking at. To move this down a little bit, might be a little bit jerky. But I can see on the image there, there's a gap there. So for some reason, it's not picking up that there or in here. So I'm going to have to readjust that. And if we look on the bird, it's not, it's not recognizing some of the stamping around here. So I'm not going to continue with this. I'm going to try and rectify some of these, um, situations so I'm going to go all the way back um, delete the scan yep delete the scan I'm going to go back to direct cut back to saying it's scan and cut I'm going to change here to black and white see if that makes a difference because sometimes it does I'm not sure if you saw I forgot I moved this So let me go back. So direct cut, my machine, you can save it to your computer, you see. So I went there 
you can change your scanning area to six by six and you'll notice if you did put not six by six, 12 by six, you would do it that way on, not that way on, which is what I did the first time. So we're sticking with the 12 by 12, but you can change it from color mode to black and white. I'm gonna see if changing to black and white makes it better. So I'm gonna start it scanning again. So it is all about sort of learning your machine. And once you've done it a few times, you kind of work out what it, what it will and won't recognize. So, okay, then I think that's better. So now we're what you saw there, that's all the lines on the, on the cut mat. So we we'll go up here, going to so that. We can see now that it's a little bit better. It is recognizing the misprints there. So we can tap on that. We'll do it in a minute. So it's recognizing my pencil mark now, which is good. Still going around those nicely. Leaves are okay. Now, if we come down here, it's now going all the way around. We've just got something odd going on there, which I'll have to deal with. But it's now doing this fine. So I'm clicking OK. Going on. Preview. And so this is where we can get rid of some of those bits that we need to get rid of. So from that bit, we go OK. Because it's a while since I've used it. Then we go to Edit. So on Edit, we're fine with that one. So it's a bit on that bit there at the top. It's now highlighted. If we go and zoom in, that bit's highlighted. So we want to get rid of that. So we delete that and then it's not going to cut that. So on here, it's not letting me isolate that bit. So I'm not worried about that. Now, That's going to cut those petals out separately. Don't want it to do that, so I'm just going to delete that so that it won't cut them out. I can just fussy cut them, maybe. So that's a full image, that's a full image, that's a full image. That one might work, that one might work. That one's showing a full image. It might do some funny little cuttings down there. Not sure. Happy with that. But it's got the whole of that. So when you press on it, the square will, or the rectangle will show you that that is all a full image. So it's going to cut those out. So we're going OK. Um, OK. Now, this is where you choose this funny little P thing there. Well, it's more of a Q in it is where you choose whether or not you want a line distance. So you can either have no line distance, then it will cut it out completely um, as the line's drawn, or you can put 0.04, I think it's centimetres. Um, so that will give us a little bit of a border. So I'm gonna go with that. And then we go okay. And then this is where it starts um, to cut. So then it will, you can see where it's going to cut. So it is going to do something odd there, but that's okay. So now we're starting and it's telling me it's going to take three minutes. So I'm going to let it run and um, I'll probably speed this bit up um, when I show it you. Oh, 
done and it's moved. Quick cutting. My paper moved, so it would it would not cut the rest of it the way I so I've got a bit of a miscut there. Um, but rather than ruin it all, but let's cut that one out nice. And it did do those separately. So. That's a don't panic, Mrs. Mr. Mannering. So I'm going to go home to quit. I'm going to load my mat again. And press it down really well. If it's not pressed down really well, then it does move. That is the first time it's ever moved on me. So, scan, direct cut to the machine. I've got it black and white, I've got it 12 by 12. Let's go start. Scanning. I think it's probably good if it goes a little bit wrong so that you can see how to rectify if it goes wrong so okay okay and now we want to edit so editing we want to take that out because that's already cut Um, we're getting rid of that one because that's the one it wanted to cut each petal out separately. Although that might have been quite nice. Um, we want to get rid of that one because it's already partially cut. Um, that one's okay. There. I'm going to get rid of that one because it's actually weird. I want to get rid of those petals. What's it going to do down there? Okay, so fine with that. I'm going to set myself a margin. Okay, select, going to cut, and hopefully it's not going to move. Oh, actually, I've missed, I've missed that bit there. Let me go back, go back to the edit. I haven't got rid of that little bit of ink in the corner. There we go. Ready to cut now. Start and just hope the paper doesn't move. She says pressing it down now as it's going. So that initial bit, I think is the blade working out how thick your paper is so that it knows the depth of which to, to cut. So that's it going around now. Cutting all the bits. Seems to be working okay this time. It does say in the instructions about not going below a certain level of GSM. I can't remember what it is now. But it works on, so I do my principles um, on 120. So it manages that okay. And our DSP is about 140, 160, depending, I think, on if it's speciality or not. I've also cut out images from, from books as well. I forgot to show you that bit. So I go out sometimes and put the kettle on and maybe make myself a drink at this point. I just leave it. Although now that I've seen the paper having moved once, I might be disinclined to do that. I 
right so that's it finished so we've finished cutting okay and now i want to unload the mats and then pull the mat up and then what's cut out i can use my spatula and we can see our image is cut out. So that's the one where I drew a pencil line. So I can now rub out those little pencil lines. That's the leaves. They're quite nice. So my idea was that I would be building, building the flowers like that. Quite cool. I say, I might do stamping without the border so you can do a comparison so i just take them off with my spatula so so with that bird so it doesn't do land landlocked area so it hasn't cut down there it might have done if i didn't do with a border around because there wasn't enough room to get by there. So if I try that again, but without a little border, that might work better. Cut that out perfectly. So now I'm going to show you, I might show you a bit of DSP. I want to see if it'll, if it'll do these hearts. I'm not going to cut the whole sheet. I'm just going to do a bit of the sheet as a bit of a tester. Because I know some people, I mean, certainly, for me, I wanted to see how how it cut DSP. So I'm gonna I'm giving this a really good firm rub. So I'm just gonna go off camera a bit on my table, give it a firm rub. And I say I'm on a dining room table that sits eight people, so it's a big table. And, um, and I'm using probably half of it. So that's that on there. Going back to home, get rid of what we've already done. Loading my mat. Then we want to scan, direct cut, right. I'm going to see what black and white looks like. If I don't like it, I'll change it to colour. Yeah, let's see if it's picked up those heart outlines. Sometimes you get a better result. Right. I just want to do a few in the corner. Going okay. And this is where we get to the edit bit. So we're going to edit. So I'm going to have. So for some of the hearts, it hasn't got the outline. And it's picking up the words in the middle. So I don't want that. I'm going to see what it looks like if I go back and tell it to do it in colour. So changing to colour there and see, see what that looks like. They're not perfect edges on these hearts. So because of that, I think I would cut them out definitely with a border. So just go up the corner there. So we go to an edit, make it a bit bigger. And it hasn't picked up any of the words this time. 
and it's just going on the outline but can you see that heart there not sure I can zoom in a bit that heart there I don't like the shape of it so I get rid of that don't like the shape of that heart there either so I want to get rid of that that's just a little bit there I don't want that one's okay that one we want red that bit there I want red so in that little section there, I've got those four hearts. Let's pick them up all right. Um, so I can get it to cut those out if I want. I might get rid of that one because it's it's just in an awkward position and that will cut into my DSP that I don't want it to. I just want to do this for demonstration purposes. So I'm going okay. Now I could choose to have a border, which I think I will. And now we're going to cut. So I could have done the whole sheet like that and you would have had to have deleted some. Um, let me come back out again. And so you'd have to have done quite a bit of sort of saying, I don't want you to cut that, don't want you to cut that. But it doesn't take too long and it is still quicker than if I'd cut it out. So that's the blade now, working out how thick this paper is. And now it's going in for the, for the cut. So I think we're only doing three hearts, aren't we? Just to, just to show you, I could do the whole sheet. So you see, if you've gone through that and you've done the whole sheet, then that would be, that would be great. It's now finished cutting, unload the mat and then if we pull up the paper, there we've got our hearts cut there. And I'm actually really pleased. I think having a border was a good move. And I'm really pleased with how they've turned out. So I might actually go ahead and do the whole sheet. But that's, that's really cute. Really cute. So the last thing to show you is a principle. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a sheet with lots of straight edges to show you, and then I'll do the sheet with the flowers. This might end up being quite a long video um i hope you're still with me uh, but i am by no means an expert i am um, i'm just playing and passing on what i've what i found out right now we can see on here She says, excuse the movement of my camera. I don't know if you can see in there, if I make it bigger on the screen, that on this, this the letter bit, it's not identified the outline of it. So I'm going to try it in black and white now. So I'm going to go into edit and I want to get rid of all of those three. So you can see the bits that are highlighted. I just get rid of them all. So this is when it sometimes becomes quite a drawn out area. I basically want all of those to come out.
and there probably is a way of grouping I'm not sure if I can if I can group just want to group those bits I don't want to group these bits So I can get rid of all of those bits. So I've selected those, get rid. Get rid. So now we're left with these bits. So I'm just going to scrutinise the edges. That's OK. That's OK. That's OK. That's a little bit weird. So I don't want that one. Oh. I don't want that one. It's got a weird bit. Don't want that little bit there on the side that it's doing. Or that bit. So now... That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. As is that one. I think it's going to cut those out all right. So we'll go for okay. And I'm not going to I'm not going to cut a margin. I'm just going to cut it directly as it is. Cut out nicely, saving me hands. That one went a bit weird, but it's all right. The thing about junk journaling is you don't. I'm not. We're not into precision, really. It doesn't really matter so much. I quite often rip edges anyway, so those other ones. Because they're more or less straight edges, I'd use my my metal ruler and rip them anyway. Oh, teeny, teeny, teeny. Right, so let's try one with lots of little bits there. So I think the only one we've got issue with really is this bingo card there. Everything else I am happy with. I still got a bit of the bingo there. Each individual letter. So I'll just get rid of them. That's got rid of all of those. So, so there we go. And I am again not going to cut it with a border. And it's sheets like this that it is the big game changer. It's uh, there's no way I'd cut round those two those two girls. I wouldn't cut round those bugs because they'd make me feel sick. Um, and they're probably going to go in the bin. I could have even told it not to cut them, but I didn't. That's just fab. Oh, love it. So that has got all of them cut out. I like to not have a border around it. When I fussy cut, I tend to leave a border around it only because that's much easier. How tiny is that? 
so it's worked beautifully and I've got that little girl out haven't cut out that little bit in between there not that bothered about that I can cope she's cut out nicely so really excited about that a few numbers there so then I just as I say just go along then with your spatula to get them all off so that huge time saver massive works really well so you can see how sometimes with the digitals it works really well and some depends on the outline now it picked up that outline all right but it didn't on the letter and that's probably partly to do with the fact that there was lots of black writing on it so it was detecting those lines because it's a scanner at the end of the day and it's just looking for lines nice little ticket i do love a ticket there. and then bugs hate bugs hate 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 that's going upside down and so finally i'll show you the flowers so i'm gonna push that down on there because that's another thing that people fussy cut out a lot giving it a good, I might be shaking the table, so I'm giving it a good rub. So I literally went quite hard over like so. Right, putting it there to mount. Oh, we didn't, um, we didn't delete what was, what was on. So it is, depends on whether you use colour or black and white, it depends on what images you're, you're cutting. And I probably didn't say at the beginning, I've got the SDX135. So that's lovely. I'll move all that up there. That's it. So let's go into edit mode. We want to just get rid of a bit of the logo still there. You can trim your paper off so you get rid of the logo. So now I'm going in and having a look and everything looks like it's going to cut okay. And in no time at all, I've got these cut out perfectly to be used however I choose to use them. So it's got all the leaf details there. So I hope that was useful for you um, in making you decide what a faff or amazing i'll start saving now um or if you were lucky enough to get one for christmas and um giving you some some little tips i'm no expert i just went through this to give you my my thoughts the expert that i watch is apple lover 57 Apple level with a number. Ashley, I do apologise. I'll link her channel down below. I've learned everything I know from her and just having a go. Um, so far, all I've used it for is a pair of scissors. It does do amazingly other things. So you could go into sort of patterns and you can choose like 
the Eiffel Tower so you can get it to cut out an Eiffel Tower. You can get it to cut out frames for you. You can cut, um, you can do words. So if you're making an anniversary card, you can get it to do anniversary. You can repeat those as well over it. But um, yeah, I mean, in terms of my journals, that sometimes I do like a bit of a, a bit of a word on it. So these are things that I have as yet not played with that much. You can choose a font and create your your own words as well. So you could type something. So I could type Nigeria. And I can choose the size, I can move it around, I can do you know, whatever I want, and then it will cut it out of a piece of paper. Or you could do vinyl, not, not, not gone there yet. But there are so many other things that you can do with it um, that I haven't as yet explored. But so far, this is a very expensive pair of scissors, but a pair of scissors that I love. Okay. So those are the things that we've cut out. So I don't know how clear it was um, on the screen, um, but it didn't pick up the outline of, of this. It picked up all these black lines here and it wanted to cut that out and do silly things around here. So didn't work for that. Didn't work very well for these outlines. There's a border there. And it didn't work but it cut the others out so i was quite happy about that um this sheet so cut all them out so this was this is a4 and i printed it out to to a sheet but it didn't like the bingo so it it was picking out each of those words separately so that's why the bingo card is not cut out but it cut all the others and um and most of my stamped images really well and the, the few hearts so um, that one it went a bit weird on, but I'm just so, so pleased. I mean, cutting out those, these were amazing. And the flowers, absolutely perfect. Such a time saver, such a time saver. That DSP, I'm going to have to think of a project for using these hearts because that's just wonderful. And I'm just loving that I've got these to play with. think I'm going to try them without a border as well. And uh, see, what, see what that's like. Um, I think I might get that cut out a bit better if I do it without border. So very happy with that. And um, just such a time saver with, with doing these. So, yeah, I hope you've stuck with me. I've been in them. I won't use them. Uh, yeah, so I hope that's been useful. hope that's uh, given you some, some thoughts on it. I know that um, when I was thinking about it, I did watch Ashley at Apple Lover 53. Um, I watched her loads and thought, yeah, yeah, I want one. I've wanted one for literally years, years and years, and always thought they were too expensive. And um, then I decided to go for it. So, yeah. So, sorry for the long video, but um, I hope it's been useful and... Um, and yeah, now I'll sort of bring you some creations with these things um, in the new year. Okay, so I'm not sure when this is coming out. I think it's coming out between Christmas and New Year. So hope you had a lovely Christmas and a happy New Year to you all. Okay, see you all again soon. Bye.